Structural change refers to changes that occur across both social and political institutions. Society is made up of various different structures and institutions, such as the family, education, economy, government, media, religion, healthcare, etc. And all these institutions work together to form a society that we know. It helps us to create our values and our norms, and these in themselves are also considered structures. The theories that we cover, conflict, evolutionary, functionalism, and interactionist, attempt to explain the changes that occur within these social structures. Structural change can bring about dramatic change. They can change people's way of life, but they also don't really have a beginning or an end. They're continuous. These institutions are always changing and adapting to different circumstances. Some of the big drivers of these changes include globalization, modernization, and westernization. Structural changes don't just impact the economy, social, and political institutions, but they also establish a new context for individual and group behavior and help us to learn and grow along with the society in which we live in. Some examples of structural change in society include democratization, demographic shifts, the strengthening of civil society, and political inclusion and power sharing. We understand that the four different theories attempt to explain how and why structural change occurs. But we also need to spend some time considering what actually causes social change to start with. We refer to this as the processes and agents of social change. The best way to analyze this and to remember it is to use the acronym STEEP, S-T-E-E-P. It helps you to categorize the different um, types and courses of social change. And I'm gonna show you a table that has some examples in it now. These are all examples of various social processes that can cause social change. And we can apply them to different theories to see how these changes will affect social structures. So how are things like population growth or population decline impact, impact some of the institutions that we know? Will it impact our healthcare? Will it impact our education institutions? What are we gonna do about it in the future? How will things like economic changes, capitalism, e-commerce, consumerism change our business institutions and our legal institutions? Political, how will democratization impact our political institutions? These are all examples of processes and causes of social change. By looking at these causes, we're able to try and figure out what the implications are for our future so we're better able to plan for them. It also helps us to understand and apply those social theories to different social contexts. So if we are seeing a um, source of change in a community, we can look and see whether or not the evolutionary theory applies. Is it happening at a macro level? Is it a interactionist theory happening at a micro level? And we can look at all the changes through the spheres of different social theories. When it comes to examination style questions, there haven't really been any specific examples of um, questions around this, around the process or agents of social change. The, the closest one that there was was really in 2015, when students were asked, how well does one social theory explain the role of technology and social change in one country? Now, it's a bit of a stretch linking this to steeps, but there are technological advancements that impact people and in society and that impacts institutions and changes institutions. Therefore, you could talk about technology being an agent of social change in this question. But that's kind of it. Not to say there won't be questions in the future asking about the process or agents of social change and about structural change in general, but I'd be surprised if they ask you specifically about, say, political or economic or environmental. It'd be more generalistic asking you to talk about an agent or a type of structural change. So that's a quick refresher on um, that dot point. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me.